I'm Trey Ram with Sticks Golf, and this fall, our friends at Bdratty sent us on a mission to explore some of the best college golf towns in the nation. We've spent a week at three different schools. Our team has documented each golf program, we've explored the local golf scene, and we've even seen a couple football games. This is a Sticks on Campus series, The Brotherhood of College Golf, presented by Bdratty. <laughs> Hey T, um, give me a call when you get this. I got some bad news. I completely blew my back out at the gym today. I don't think there's any way I can sit in a car for two hours, much less play golf for two days. So it's a bummer, but I know you'll kill it down in uh, Clemson. And uh, yeah, dude, just give me a call. Peace. Well, that is just not what you want to hear from your co-host the day before you're heading on a trip together. Um, that was Tuesday, 24 hours before we were set to meet in South Carolina. Just a huge bummer, luckily, we had another guy lined up to join us for the week anyway. Our friend William Rainey is a very accomplished former Division I college golfer. He played his golf at College of Charleston. He's also very good behind the camera and he's gonna be helping us capture some of the visuals in this video. Our goals this week are simple. We're gonna learn as much as we can about the Clemson golf program. We're gonna play some new golf in a part of the country that I've never been to. And we're gonna see if a Clemson football game is as good as they say it is. Welcome to Clemson, South Carolina. We begin our week the way any college recruiting visit would start. We meet the coach, coach Sweeney there. hop in a golf cart, and begin a tour of the campus. This is a campus that is both beautiful and familiar. The old side was designed by the same people who built Auburn, the early 1900s architecture firm Bruce and Morgan. Much like golf courses built in the same golden age, their design stands out in the crowd of things that have been built since. Our tour begins inside the football stadium where we meet a few of the players who are enjoying a little athletes only breakfast. This is Kean Rose from South Africa, Thomas Higgins from Ireland, and Sean Curran from Chicago. These guys take us on a walking tour. We hit a few of their favorite spots and then they head off to class. We'll catch up with them later. We hop back in the cart on our way to the familiar looking golf clubhouse to get to know coach Jordan Bird and learn about the long history of success here at Clemson. Uh, Jordan Bird, I'm the head coach at Clemson University for the men's golf team, uh, originally from Columbia, South Carolina. I've been with the program since July 1st, 2005. I've been the head coach now for just over a year and a half. You've been around for kind of a lot of the stuff we see in this room. Tell us about um, sort of the past success years. Talk about how many All-Americans you guys have had, <clears throat> what some of those guys have been able to do. I believe we've had 67 All-Americans here at Clemson. We've had a national championship in 2003. Uh, we've had eight regional NCAA regional titles. I think we've had uh, 11 ACC championships, uh, 15 PGA Tour victories, one major, Lucas Glover winning in 2009 on the U.S. Open. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of success. Two USAM champions. Carson Young, who's on the PGA Tour for the first time this year, Jacob Bridgman still lives here in Clemson. He'll be playing on the Corn Ferry this year. Ben Martin is another one who lives in town, lives in Greenville, which is 45 minutes away. So he's over practicing and he occasionally plays with our team. So anytime we can get those guys involved, it's, it's only a bonus for us. Our, our biggest benefit is for our facility is it's right here on campus. I mean, we're a few hundred yards from Neary, which is the academic support center. We're a couple hundred yards from the gym. We're surrounded by the other uh, athletic teams and their practice facilities. Maybe the best thing on our facility is the lights. Right here in front of us, we've got three indoor hitting bays. Track man, video cameras, force plates, some of the really cool new technology. Also, we've got an indoor putting lab. It's got a sand putt lab, putt view, uh, a couple holes about 40 feet apart for some speed games. Then obviously we have our range, which is only for men's and women's golf. Um, so that's nice. We don't ever have to worry about other people being out here. I mean, it's a great place to get better. I don't know how you couldn't get better. Great place to just come out. I mean, it's five minutes from my house. It's walking distance from campus, so there's no reason to not be out here. It's just a great place to come and hang out. I'm Sean Curran from Chicago, and um, 
I'm a sophomore here at Clemson. It's nice because you get hit balls, but at any time you kind of want to chill out, you go in the clubhouse. Kind of got lounge areas, ping pong, stuff like that. It's impossible to come to this facility and not see or hear the name Larry Penley. He was the head coach for 38 years and is responsible for the transformation of this program into the powerhouse it is today. His impact on this place and his former players is undeniable. He is the program. I think is a good way of putting it. Um, what he did, I don't know how it was 39 years ago, I guess, because he, he retired after 38 from whatever it was that time and, and brought it into where we could have all this. I, I played here from uh, 1993 to 1998. I uh, played for Coach Penley. You know, when, when I was here, we basically had just a big field out here. Um, that we would use as our driving range. His name should be on everything because it's him. What would you say that you learned from him as a coach? Like what, what made him so successful? Well, hopefully I learned a whole bunch from him. I worked under him for 16 years. Uh, he had, you know, an incredible, incredible record. He's certainly a legend here at Clemson. But I think, hopefully I learned the people skills. Uh, I think the former players have a really close relationship with him. He's always somebody that, that you can call up and, and talk to and um, I think that's one of the bigger, bigger parts about it is like I could call him up in 20 years and he'd love to have a have a talk with me. So I think that's that's the one of the best parts about him. He was also a great sports psychologist. So whenever we had team meetings, I felt like as an assistant coach, not just as a player, I was sitting on kind of the edge of my seat, just listening intently to what he was going to tell the team because he just had this ability to to kind of push the right buttons like. He knew which player needed to be pushed, which one needed to be kind of coddled and encouraged. Uh, but he really had a pulse on each individual player and how to, how to motivate them, how to push them. There's this old school tradition from Coach Penley that it certainly is a, is a humbling one for the guys. You're required to pick up every golf ball that you hit. Basically the idea is if we have to pick our own balls, we'll be more precise with where we aim. So obviously I don't want to spray it all the way around this range because then I got to go pick up balls. So try and keep it, try and keep it on the same line for the most part. Um, also, I think it emphasizes like us hitting more wedges because you know, on a day where you're not really feeling like going in 200 yards down the range, you can hit a lot of shorter clubs and kind of dial in your dial in your wedges a little more. Yeah, there's a little bit of uh, I guess like accountability that goes on like when we get done you know obviously we're the ones that have to sand all of our we kind of have to take care of it ourselves we don't have any staff members that'll do it for us yeah so there's definitely some accountability with it <laughs> there's nothing wrong with a little check to keep the guys humble and in exchange they get access and use of a facility that has everything else you could ask for tomorrow we find out what a day as a Clemson golfer looks like. We're a few weeks into the off season and this time of year, their day begins either in the classroom or on the range. Workouts are bumped to 11 a.m., let the guys catch up on sleep, get some much earned rest. So after a morning of studying either books or swing videos, the guys head into the gym to get a workout in. Go! Ooh, 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 ooh. Go! Yeah. We watched them go through what looked like a very tough workout, lots of weights, lots of competition. After 45 tough minutes, we head upstairs to an empty gymnasium. We watch the guys play a game that I've never seen before, but it looks like a ton of fun and a lot better than just running sprints for some cardio at the end of the lift. During the off season, we try to get some like conditioning in. So we did med ball, volleyball. You have to throw the med ball over the net, just like volleyball. Um, you play it at like seven or eight. It's really fun. It's very, you have to talk a lot. You have to communicate because you switch in and out and you substitute. You got him, you got him, you got him. I got you, Carter. Back. Whoa, 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 whoa. I think for us, like, it's just a fun way to get some conditioning in because like, we don't, we're golfers, we don't really like to run a whole lot. And so 
getting into like the gym and like the volleyball court up there, playing some med ball is super fun and it's just a good way to get in some extra work. Go ball. Game. 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 Cheers, mate. Cheers, lad. 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 Cheers, and we're gonna meet up with them this afternoon at the golf course. So take me through like a, a normal practice for you guys that, that Coach Bird is running. So like what do you guys do when you have like official team practice? So we'll have three hour practice, um, and most of the time that's accompanied with a one hour workout, either before or after. Um, but during our practice, for the most part, what we'll do is we'll have maybe a putting, couple putting drills and a chipping drill that we're, you know, required to complete. Um, and then the rest is kind of free time. So normally I'd say about hour, hour and a half of like, okay, this is what you've got to get done. And then the rest is kind of like work on what you need to work on, which is nice. Cause I mean, especially, especially the younger kids, whenever you don't really know what you're doing, how to practice, it's nice to have that sort of, I guess, formatted practice starting out. And then you kind of learn and you can build your own practice based off that. During our, you know, Sundays or during our free time, like, We'll go out and play with the guys. Today we're playing regional host site, The Falls at Kiowee Cliffs. The Falls are a high-end residential club community with several properties around South Carolina and the region. We hear this is very popular for families from up north. They'll join while their kids are in school here, maybe buy a house and make this kind of home base for football season. All right, so we're in the car. We're heading to the cliffs at Kiowee Falls, which is one of the courses that Clemson men's golf plays at quite a bit. We're going to meet up with the team over there. I just was not expecting this type of land movement in South Carolina at all. I mean, we're pretty far west. We've got some serious hills. We've got some mountains in the background. We've got lakes. And when I think of South Carolina golf, I'm thinking Palmetto Golf Club, Kiowa, coastal, like, you know, the Charleston area, the Hilton Head area. Even, Palmetto's got some hills, but it's not, it's not like this. Getting to the golf course, it was, a, it was just rolling hills, massive lakes everywhere. I just didn't really expect that out of the terrain at Clemson. So I think that that was probably the biggest surprise for me for the golf. Today, I'm playing with Drayton Stewart, Carter Penley, and Jonathan Nielsen. I'll take, I'll take him. Let's go, let's do I'm it. taking the... Oh, I love it. All right, man, John. I'm taking the camera band. I mean, right. I, I would have been it there, too. Wait. That was weird. Go. Go in. Oh. <laughs> Golf shot. Like, in the off season, whatever, if it's a nice day and, like, we want to go play, like, we'll definitely call each other up. Rip it up. Do y'all have access to these places on, on days like that? We do. That's um, nice. So, between, I guess, the three, four courses we play. So it's kind of like your members, but you got to, like, you know, it's not like you're out here at every day, but you can Right. You can I mean, play. we're more, I guess you could, you know, consider it more of like an honorary guest. Honorary guest, like, yeah. And you guys have enough places where you can like mix we it up. We can kind of so mix it up so we don't overloading, overuse it. Overloading yeah. a place, that's great. So it's nice. I mean, we've got three or four places that we can play and they kind of give us days where like yeah. we can we can get a time. Nice. Well, that's obviously good for four. Four. Yeah, make this so they can carry it up the hill. Oh. Get All up right. there. I think snack. I can live with that. <laughs> <laughs> I can live with that. Oh, Johnny can't. These three are in very different spots in their college golf journey. So Jonathan is just transferred in here from a nearby Division II school, and he's got a great opportunity in front of him. He's he's definitely eyeing a pro golf career, and he's he's moving up the ladder for sure. Jonathan is a transfer from Carson Newman this year. Um, he really came in in hopes of adding a lot of depth for our team, but I think Jonathan is realizing that he could be really good at this game. I mean, I, I've been pretty much blown away with how good he is, and I think he's starting to realize that he could be a great player. That's gonna be good. No! Did you expect yourself to be at a school like this, and like how did it end, how did this end up working out? So, after my first year where I was at Carson Newman, I didn't have a great season, so. 
I didn't have. You didn't, you didn't see this right around the corner? <laughs> As I started the second season, had a really good fall semester. It wasn't really in my mind at all until my brothers were like, hey, you're having a really good season. Maybe you should, you should think about uh, other Upgrading, schools. yeah. And uh, really trying to, trying to take it further with the career as well. I don't mean a good college player. I mean, I, I think he has the tools to play professional golf. Uh, if he keeps working the way he is, um, I think he's going to have a great chance to it. Drayton and Carter are two of the seniors of this team, and I'm glad that I got paired with them today because I heard a perspective that I hadn't heard yet. Those three, uh, Dart and uh, Carter and Zach and Drayton, but we call them Dart, they're just a fun group to be around, and like just their seniors are like super seniors, and uh, they just are people you like look up to, I guess, and you like they're kind of the leaders. You know, we're going through this round, and I'm thinking about this idea of brotherhood and really what it means here, how it ties into this group. And as I get to know these seniors better, their stories reveal exactly what brotherhood means here. I spend every hour of every day with at least one of my teammates. Um, I live with Drayton and Zach, but I mean, if I'm not with them, I'm with someone else. I mean, that's just how it is around here. We all live with golfers. We play as much as we can. We hang out as much as we can. We eat together. We I mean, we do everything together. We're like eating buddies, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. That was the culture that we were brought into. When, when we got here, everybody did everything together. It wasn't just one or two guys going to get dinner. It was five or six guys going to get dinner. And so that was just kind of the culture that we, we brought up. And I think that's the hardest like, part about leaving is like the people you're leaving. It's not necessarily what, Clemson's a special place. And I think we all can agree on that, but it's, it's who you're leaving. Carter and me are, we're pretty, we're pretty tight. We have, we went through some stuff freshman year. We got here and obviously he's, he's from Dalton. I'm from Charleston. You know, we were both, you know, top players in the state and we struggled when we got here. It was bad. We, you know, just terrified to hit a golf shot. We had those eight guys here and there were six guys. Zach was the sixth man, pretty much sixth to fifth. And those guys were the ones playing every tournament and they should have. I mean, me and Carter were struggling. We couldn't hit it on a map, couldn't putt, couldn't, I mean, we couldn't do anything right. We've just kind of gone through it together and he'll be one of my good friends for life for sure. We learned a, a valuable and, and definitely unexpected lesson uh, from, from Drayton about this program. Um, I'm a little different than most. I didn't play much. Um, I worked at it, I did what I could and each year I saw improvement, but it was always just a couple shots here, a couple shots here that kind of stopped me from getting to the next level. And so for me, um, it's the relationships with the, with the guys. And I, you know, that's kind of cliche, but for me, it's a little different because I didn't play a lot. So that's stuff that I have to rely on. Like I wasn't treated any differently when I wasn't playing versus the way Jacob was treated, you know, when he's winning ACCs was not any different than the way when Zach and Carter were treating him the way they're gonna treat me. Like everything's the same. And that's what I try to bring to the team It's because it can get hard. There's no travel squad like in football. Everybody can't go to the game. Not everyone who comes to a school like this gets the opportunity to play every week. Only five or six guys travel and the mark of a truly great program, great coaching, great culture is when your number one player who's an All-American and your number 10 guy who doesn't get much time in the lineup feel like they've had the same experience and they feel like they've had a positive experience. I've, I've realized that I view golf a lot differently now than I did when I first got here. You know, the love that I had for it was because I was good at it. It was because I played well and it's gonna help pay for school. Now it's like the time that we, you know, when you're on the tee box and you're waiting and you're talking with the guys for five minutes or you're walking down the fairway or, you know, when you can watch somebody hit a good shot or they watch you hit a bad shot and like you laugh, like those are the memories that I'm gonna miss. And I think Clemson provided me with friends that I will never, ever lose. I'll never lose touch with them. And I think that's probably the most important thing because it can, it can be hard not playing a lot. And I think them showing me that it didn't matter was always more appreciated than they'll ever know. Well, that's one of the reasons why I coach is, is to just kind of help them along this path, along this journey um, uh, of becoming a, a, a young man um, so it's really cool to, to see that growth, whether it be on the academic side, on the golf side. Um, but getting to watch that process is really cool and just be a part of it. Just try to encourage them at certain times, 
um, maybe even discipline them at certain times. But, but you're trying to kind of push them along this journey into, into hopefully becoming the best version of themselves. You can look at a program like Clemson and the people who have been a part of it over the years, and it's easy to see the abundant golf success, the names on tour, all the achievements. And absolutely, these, these achievements and these players are incredible ambassadors for the program. And everyone who comes through that door as a freshman, they want to achieve those things on the golf course. No question about it. But when you hear a story from the other side of the equation, which is an all too common reality for NCAA athletes of, of any sport, where your career doesn't go how you want it to on the playing field, but when you hear that these players are still having an overwhelmingly positive experience, they feel like they're leaving here with more than they came with, that's when you know as a coach, as a program, as an athletic department that you're doing things right and you are having success. That, to me, is what brotherhood means in Clemson. We had some guys from Bdratty in town. Kent Barber, Lee Norwood, just great guys to hang out with. Um, they both live in Greenville. They came over for the for the game. You know, we're walking around, checking out tailgates, seeing the spots. It, and when you're when you're in a college town with someone that knows everyone, it's it is just so much fun. And Kent knows a lot of people in Clemson. Um, he's got some great connections there, and he was he was showing us all the spots. So we got a proper tour of the stadium, of the tailgates. It was just a, a top-notch experience for us for my first time in Death Valley and at the athletic department decided to offer us field media passes. So Will and I were on the field for the entire game and it was just I, hard to describe how cool that was because I've never watched a football game on the field, much less a Clemson football game. Um, they were playing against Miami, they smoked them. But just watching you know, Dabo Swinney up close, watching that level of football up close was was awesome. It's a really, really cool operation they have at Clemson, and the football really drives the bus. You know, it's it's a lot easier to, to buy track mans and build new greens and facilities when you have all that attention and money coming in through your football team, and I think that the guys know that. They definitely credit the football program and Coach Swinney with, with a lot of the stuff they have access to now. All, all of athletics and all of the stuff that we're fortunate to get yeah. is based off of what they've been able to accomplish. Yeah. So after spending some time with these guys and these coaches, it's just so obvious that this program has it figured out. They've got all the facilities they need. They've got unbelievable golf courses like this to play on, and they're just a great group of guys that love being around each other, love practicing, love playing golf, and uh, it's, it's just obvious why they've had so many All-Americans, so many guys be so successful after they've been here, and it's just... It's tough to imagine a better place to play college golf. Boom. One take.